Good morning. It's 9 a.m. and as General Manager of Community and Development Services for the county, I will call this meeting of the Municipal Planning Commission to order. As per MPC Bylaw 2018-11, we are to appoint a chair and a vice chair, the first meeting following the organizational meeting of council. This meeting may be recorded and uploaded to social media. We are conducting this meeting in person and via conference call in accordance with the Municipal Government Act, Section 199. Council and committee meetings can take place in person as long as physical distancing of two meters can be maintained between participants. At this time, according to Alberta Health, public attendance at council and committee meetings should be facilitated through virtual means. Everyone has the right to be present at council and committee meetings. Any attendees that are considered disruptive to the progression of this meeting may be removed at the discretion of the chair, as per Municipal Government Act Section 198. As per Municipal Planning Commission Policy 7.13, members of the public are not permitted to speak unless the Commission gives approval to do so. Because we are conducting a hybrid meeting with some members in Council Chambers and some members connecting virtually, we will conduct a roll call. Member Eichert. Excuse me, here. Member Armstrong. Here. Member Klassen. I'm here on the phone. Member Link. Good morning. Member Bigger. Here. Member Kester. Here. Member Wilson. Member Wilson a second time. Uh, Jason is not on the line. Thank you. Voting procedures for this meeting will be as follows. Should there be more than one nomination for the chair or vice chair position, a secret ballot will be taken with the candidate rece receiving the majority of the votes declared successful for the, for the position. In the case where a clear majority is not successful in the first vote, then the voting would continue on first and second choice only and the third and subsequent parties would be eliminated. This process would continue until a clear majority is successful. Are there any objections to this voting procedure? I will start with nominations for the chair. Once the chair is nominated, the chair will take the lead and call for nominations of the vice chair. Are there any nominations for the chair of the Municipal Planning Commission? I'll put uh, Tom Eckett's name forward. He's been there for a year and he hasn't got it accomplished perfectly yet, so he needs some more time at it. <laughs> Member Eichert has been nominated for the chair. Are there any further nominations? Yes, I'll accept. Are there any further nominations? Third and final time. Member Eichert is now the chair of Municipal Planning Commission for the year. I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much. Um, 64 years old and I still don't know my purpose in life. I guess there's there's hope. There's hope. Still time. Still time. Uh, okay, we have a. Uh, I'll take nominations for uh, for vice chair. Nominations are open. I'll nominate Councillor Bigger. Councillor Member Bigger, do you accept the nomination? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, I close nominations and I and uh, welcome aboard Vice Chair Bigger. Okay, um, we have a uh, copy of the agenda before us. Um, are there any additions? None from administration. Seeing there any, just, I'll just add one oh, under okay. uh, at the end under other planning matters. Just an update to council to MPC as well. Sorry, what was that on? Just an update. Okay. For, uh, under okay four four one. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I get a um, um, somebody adopt the uh, the agenda? I'll approve, I'll approve the agenda as amended. Thank you, Donna. Are there any 
any negative votes. It's not the right word, but that's a work today. Hearing none, I'll, uh, the, the agenda is adopted. We have a copy of the, uh, the minutes from October 13th meeting. Are there any corrections? And if not, can I have somebody move the minutes? So moved, Member Link. Member Link has moved the minutes. Any opposition? <laughs> Hearing none, minutes are approved. We will now go on to development permit applications 2.1 DP 2020-118. Good morning. I'm Suzanne Hayes, development officer with Wheatland County. The application before us is DP 2020-118 for a dwelling accessory with a variance to the maximum allowable size. If you would please go to the location plan on page 14, appendix A. Um, you will see uh, where we are located, approximately three miles north of Highway, the intersection of Highway 1 and Highway 21. And if you go to Appendix B on the same page, you can see our circulation area. We circulated to residents within one mile of the application. There were no responses. Internal staff had no concerns. Um, agencies were circulated Alberta Transportation and they did issue a roadside development permit. So we go down to page 15, which is Appendix uh, C and D there. We can see a site plan of where this proposed dwelling is going to be located down on the south part of the, of the parcel. It's going to be about 14.26 uh, meters from the property line. And if we go down to the appendix D on page 16 still, we're still in appendix D, just some more aerial photographs. You can see that they are sharing an access off of Highway 21 for the primary dwelling and the dwelling accessory. And uh, you can see on, the, um, on page 16, there are the two residences depicted there the primary dwelling and the proposed dwelling accessory. And you can see that the primary is 1,110 square feet and the accessory is 1,520 square feet, so larger than the primary. Plan use bylaw says that the dwelling accessory must not be more than 80% of the size of the primary. However, the primary cannot be a manufactured dwelling according to the definition. Therefore, a variance is required for the maximum size. So the accessory will be larger than the primary. And if we go down, just some um, illustrations, uh, photographs from the website and illustrations, and that's on page 17. And page 18 shows the existing primary. So the application does not align with the land use bylaw with regards to the accessory building or the accessory dwelling being greater than 80%. However, it does meet the intent of this provision to have one dwelling appear larger than the other. So it's not expected to cause adverse effects on surrounding landowners, and there were no responses from any neighbors. So staff feel the criteria for allowing a variance has been met. If we go back in the report on agenda page eight, you will see staff's recommendation that we are recommending approval of the dwelling accessory with the variant. On page 12, you will see uh, Municipal Planning Commission standard three options. And uh, please uh, let us know which option you are choosing to approve, to refuse, or another of your choice. And that concludes my presentation. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, MPC's wishes? I clap in here. I'll make the motion to approve DP 2020-118 uh, subject to the conditions. Thank you very much, Member Clausen. We have a motion before us. Is there anyone opposed? Hearing no opposition, I DP 2020-18 is passed.
We will now go on to sub. Sorry. Okay. We will now go on to subdivision applications. Um, 3.1 S uh, SD 2020-015. Good morning, MPC members. Uh, this is Graham Allison here presenting the subdivision application SD 2020-015 to subdivide one 12.3 acre parcel from Southwest 16 24 20 west of the fourth. Uh, if you refer to page 24 of your agenda package, you'll see the subject parcel located at the intersection of Highway 561 and Range Road 204, approximately 4.5 kilometers west of Hussar. Staff have circulated this application to external agencies and internally, as well as to adjacent landowners within a one mile radius of the subject lands. Uh, Alberta Transportation requested the dedication of a 30 meter service road right of way along the highway frontage of the proposed parcel, uh, which has been added as a condition of the subdivision and no other reject or objections were received on this application. The tentative plan uh, is located on page 25 of your MPC package uh, as well there's an air photo on page 26. Both show that the application is to subdivide the first parcel out of a quarter section located within six, Southwest 16, 24, 20, west of the 4th Meridian. Uh, the proposed parcel has an area of 12.36 acres and contains a dwelling serviced by a well and a private sewage disposal system. It also contains a shop, barn, and grain bins. The proposed uh, and remainder parcels are both zoned agricultural general and are in compliance with the regulations of the agricultural general district and thus re redesignation is not required. The proposed and remainder parcels also both have existing approaches uh, and there are no plans for further development uh, on either parcel at this time. The plan is generally in alignment with the strategies, objectives, and policies within the South Saskatchewan Regional Plan, the Regional Growth Management Strategy, the Municipal Development Plan, and the Land Use Bylaw. The proposed parcel is serviced by its own private well and private septic system uh, as well. And as per the Municipal Government Act, municipal reserve is not required on the subject parcel, as Section 663 states that subdivision authority may not require the owner of a parcel of land subject to a proposed subdivision to provide reserve or cash uh, lieu if the subdivision is the first lot subdivided from quarter section. This is the first parcel out subdivision and thus municipal reserve will not be required. Administration is recommending that Municipal Planning Commission approve subdivision application SD 2020-015 subject to the conditions noted in the planning report. And that concludes this presentation and I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Graham. Um, are there any questions? Questions? We have a, uh, can we have a motion on this? MPC's wishes, please. I don't see anything wrong with it. I see the Planning Commission approve uh, application 2020-15 with the following five conditions. Seven conditions, I'm sorry. Thank you, Ben. We have a motion before us. Anyone opposed? Hearing no opposition, the subdivision application is passed. Uh, move on to other planning matters. 4.1, Ben, you have an update. Just, uh, yeah, I mentioned that uh, I talked to council last week and I had a meeting with Sunshine, uh, uh, the principals at Sunshine, not the developer, but just the uh, boss and his son, Martin and his son. They're a uh, fellow that had the, the Remet, remedic, remedic, remit, re, how the hell do you say that? Remedics, remedic. It's still wanting to do something out there with that uh, direct control as far as that landfill. And uh, I said, oh, if you guys want to do it, I said, you have to make a new application. You can't, uh, you, they, they figure they've spent enough money out there that they're willing to take a shot at it again. But I didn't give them any uh, promises or anything. I just said, well, go talk to the staff. I said, if you want to re, re, uh, re uh, admit it, that's up to you. But a whole new application. So just so that you know, it might be coming back in. With the new application, then it's the same thing. You have to have public inquiry and all that kind oh, of stuff. Oh, brand new. Yeah, just exactly what they did before. That. Okay. Thank you, Ben. That's, that's, that's the extent of it. 
Is there anything else anybody would like to discuss? No? I guess that's it. Thanks everybody for joining in. All you guys have fought this, these horrible streets and made it out here. Way to go, troopers. And uh, I adjourn this meeting. <laughs>